Hi, it's Amanda from Music Game Club, and today I will teach you how to play Scarecrow Scores. Before I do this, I will walk you through everything you will get with the game download. So as you see here, there's the game board, and it is in two pages. You can tape them together if you want to, to make them stay more stable. But it is a full music score, starting there at the top with the time signature, and it has four systems and ends here with a double bar line. You will get the game instructions that kind of walk you through how to play or just keep watching this video. I'll basically tell you what's on that list. This is very important. It is the movement guide. If you are not familiar with any of the special score markings, then this will kind of walk you through that and what you need to do. There is the celebration poster that students can take a picture with after they have won the game and it features all of our beautiful crows. There is an activity sheet that you can download to send home with your students so it will review all of the different concepts that they've learned. There are both level one and level two cards. The level one cards have easier concepts like repeat 8VA. The level two cards have slightly difficult like DS Alpha A and DS Alcoda as well. There is also this very abnormal level two card, which is the coda. I'll explain how to use that later, but if you know how to play codas, then you will just add it later on to the score as needed. Finally, there are our eight beautiful crow game pieces that you can choose from to play. Not included, but you do need to have a die or you can download a free dice rolling app on your phone. So you just need one die for this game. All right, let's learn how to play Scarecrow Scores. So for very beginning students, you can play this game just as it is. Each student will pick a game piece. I will do the Kerosene Crow and the Hooded Crow and they will start where you start all music at the beginning. The very basic gameplay is you roll a die and move forward however many you roll. So that's three, so you'd move forward three spaces. One, two, three. Player two. Player two moves forward five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Player one, five. One, two, three, four, five. Player two. One, two, three, four, five. Player one. One, two. Player two. One, two, and then that's the end. Okay, so that is the basic. If you want to play with your very beginning students, it's just reading through the score, following the measures. Then, unlike most games, for this game, you will start with the level one cards, which have different things like repeat an octave higher or repeat 8VA. We, all, we do have two versions, whether you'd like to do 8VA underneath or 8VB underneath. I personally prefer 8VB underneath by the method books that I use, but I realize there are two different ways. Then here's just a regular 8VA, a regular 8VA underneath, a fermata, a forward repeat sign, a repeat three times, backwards repeat, repeat 8VB, both hands, repeat both hands. Okay, so there's kind of the look through all of the level one cards. So the way you would do this, either you can shuffle them and just pick a random card. Okay, here's a forward repeat sign. And then you can work with the student to decide where you want to put it. Now, obviously, you never have to put a forward repeat sign on the very first measure, but you could put it anywhere you wanted to. Here, here, here. So you and the student can decide where you want to put that forward repeat sign. Now, when you have a forward repeat sign, you also need a backward repeat sign to point to it. So you will need to go through your cards to find that. And you can explain that to your students. Say, oh, this one can't work alone. This one has to work with another card. Here you have your backward repeat and the same thing. You could put it wherever you want to. You could put it at the end. You could put it anywhere you want to. Let's put it right here. So that could be another version that you play and you're just adding two cards. So now your student will start right here in the beginning and we'll go through the beginning and then whenever it reaches here, then it goes back to this place and then it goes to the end. So basically it's a build your own score type of game. And if you reach things like repeat 8VB, well, let's say you just use the backward repeat sign 
then this needs to go in the beginning because when you go to the repeat, that's when you're going to play ABB. Technically, you could also put it to where it is right here because it could be that whenever you play this on the repeat, it doesn't repeat down, but whenever you play right here, it does. There are two ways you could do this for all the 8VA and 8VB and 15MA and all that. So either you can just have the student, when they reach it, they have to say what it means. So if the student does the repeat and goes to here, they'd be, oh, now my left hand needs to be an octave lower, and then they keep playing. Or if you wanted to just for fun, whenever they reach this, they say, oh, 8VB, that means I go lower, and they can actually put their playing piece underneath the staff. That's optional. Whatever helps your students. If you're not sure how these cards all work and what all these terms mean, keep an eye out because I will be working on videos that walk you through exactly what all the cards mean. But remember, you do also have the movement guide to help you if you need a little bit of assistance. Now let's talk through some of the level two cards. As I've already said, there's the coda section, which is very abnormal for a card, but we really wanted to include it. So here you have the DS alpha A, you have a first ending, you have the backward repeat, you have 15MA and 15MB for both hands, DS Alcoda, DC Alcoda, third ending, DC Alpha A, a second ending, those were definitely not in order. You have a two coda, then you have, this is the alternative, 15MA and 15MA instead of 15MB. You have the segno, you have the repeat both hands 15MA, repeat both hands 15MB if you prefer that one, repeat both hands 15MA, repeat hands 15MA and 15MA. So this one basically is the 15MA and then all of the DS alpha A. So let's say you want to teach your student about the DS alpha A. So, okay, we're going to say when you reach right here, you'll get the DS alpha A. What do you need to see in order for that to work? You need to have the segno. So then that obviously can go, you would not want to put it up top because that's the DC alpha A. So maybe you put it right there. And then whenever the student plays through it, they will do the first line, the second one, then they go back to the segno and then they keep going. And you can combine things. So maybe you have that and you have the first ending and the second ending. So then when a student plays this, they would play through here, DS alpha and A, play through here, then they repeat, and the second. So you can combine them as well. Let me explain the coda to you because that's possibly one of the most confusing. So you have your DC Alcoda, which we'll put there at the end, and then we want a place to go to the coda. So let's say it's right here. Then you also need to put the coda. So then when a student plays, they will go through here, ignore that for the first time, then they'll do the capo Alcoda, they go back to the beginning, and then right there, they're going to jump to the coda and then play here. So basically, when you're rolling your die, that's, that's just the pattern. They roll the die to see how many moves they make, but they have to know how to read the signs. So we hope that this will be a fun game for your students. There are a lot of students who get very confused about how to read a score, and we're very hopeful that this will help your students really feel confident with that. And when they see it in music, they won't be confused. In fact, you can actually use Scarecrow scores to introduce the concept before they see it in music. And that will be a very exciting way. Our students love it whenever they're looking at music and they're like, oh, this was in the game that we played. And it means this. We love hearing that because the students understand what it is before they reach it in music. And usually students, when they reach it in music, they're worrying about reading the notes and getting the rhythm and also all of these crazy score symbols that are thrown at them. So if you introduce it in a game, there's no notes here. They're just learning how to maneuver the score. This will help students to gain confidence and knowledge in how to read all of the different crazy score markings that you see. Have fun playing Scarecrow scores with your students. And don't forget to celebrate with the success poster. And if you take pictures and post them on social media, be sure to tag us at Music Game Club on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. 
have fun.